Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. And welcome back to the podcast. This is Lee Brown and I'm bringing you Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, we are honored to have as our guest, Nobu Hata, who has a past history as a broker and currently works to make real estate better for everybody across the industry by working with NAR. So welcome to the show, Nobu. Thank you, Lee. It's an honor to be here. So tell the people listening where you have practiced real estate so they'll get some context on whatever story you're fixing to tell us. I was in real estate before uh, NAR. I was eight years in, in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. And before that, Alaska, Washington State, California, kind of all over the place. I tried to get out of real estate when I moved to Minneapolis, but it's like the mob. You know, once you're in, you're in. You can't get go. Forever. Yep. Okay, so the ground rules of these short episodes on the podcast are that you can't use F-bombs or GDs because I'm allergic to those two words, but anything else flies. And please don't name names or addresses so that in your story, if there's a guilty party, only they can identify themselves. That's all cool. All right. So tell us about whatever crazy thing you ran across in this business. <laughs> it was actually during my, my time in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area with um, uh, the historic housing that, uh, that the area tends to have. It's, it's a beautiful market where you can literally go from a turn-of-the-century home. Uh, drive 15 minutes away and you can be in, uh, you know, the suburbs with new construction. I love that market. And if anybody's listening from Minneapolis, St. Paul area, uh, I miss you guys and love you guys. But uh, one of the stories I had was, um, and Mike Oppler always gets on me when I tell the story, but um, it's, it's, it's like, aside from nudity and dogs, like ghost stories are one of those things that you don't really understand one until you experience one. And I, I was never that guy that believed in that crap, but well, one day I was showing a bunch of houses to some uh, good clients of mine, a really fantastic area, and I was, it was one of those days where I, where I was showing them everything. It was new construction, started out new construction, then we ended in the city. It was cold, it was dark, it was the last showing, and we walked into this beautiful home in uh, southwest Minneapolis. It was one of those like turn-of-the-century kind of uh, craftsman-style three stories. It was a huge house. And the third story above was a finished attic. They turned it into a bedroom, kids' room. It was pretty awesome. Showed the house. It was, it was great. Um, the wife, as soon as we walked in, immediately said, I, I don't like this place. There's something weird about this place. I don't get it. And the husband and I were like, you know, it's 8 o'clock. We're going to go get some beers after this. I think you're just tired. Let's just go through and, and take a look. We walked through the home. The wife just would not leave the husband's side. Um, we walked the home into the basement where the, the wife was petrified to go down there. And we walked um, upstairs, uh, second level, uh, and into the attic space that turned in, that was a, a bedroom, beautiful spot. It was actually the most redone of, out of all the, uh, the stories. Ended it, walked out, wasn't the house for them. I realized pretty quickly that um, I left the only light, the only light I left on was in that attic space. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, okay, guys, just give me a second. I'm going to come walk back up there. Uh, I walked upstairs, walked through the home, made sure all the lights were turned off and um, I walked in the attic space and I had to walk to the front, front of that story to turn off the light. And I walked in and I just over the, over my shoulder, I noticed what I thought was the husband, uh, my client. I thought maybe he just kind of followed me in and was just walking to the house again because he loved the house. She hated it. Um, I walked in and I was like, hey, uh, so-and-so. Did you want to uh, keep looking at this home? Uh, this this place is this place is wide open, and they're not going to be back for a while. I looked over my shoulder, and and it, it and uh, I I swore it was my client. I turned off the light, looked over my shoulder again, and whatever was there, it was like this 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 figment of 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 like it was like a shadow, poof, and disappeared. I turned the light back on. No one was there. I screamed bloody murder. I could I I I, I was I, I was at this point was I, I was so scared. I ran all the way back downstairs into the snow, and I asked my client, did you go back into that house to take another look? And he said, no. It's like, we've been sitting here freezing our butts off the whole time. And I went, oh, well, I just had my first freaking ghost story to tell of all time. And, 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 and the funny part about it was, 
uh, the wife was like, I felt it, I felt it, I felt it. I do not want to go back in this home again. They ended up buying new construction because of all of that. Um, but I, uh, I sent back in the feedback to the agent. I'm like, hey, uh, I just had a weird experience there. Uh, what's going on in that home? And she called me back and said, well, you know, the house, the sellers say is haunted. That was Mel, the ghost that you met. He is harmless. Uh, and if you, have, <laughs> if you have any clients for that home, I know your clients aren't, aren't uh, interested in it, but if you have any more for that home, fantastic. That was the last time I ever walked into that home. And to this day, I talk with this listing agent all the time about this home, whether or not she's picked up any more haunted houses for, for, for her to sell. Um, it was surreal. And I never would have thought that I would have talked about uh, this kind of thing. It's still one of those formative like moments in my mind. Like, you don't sell enough houses until you walk into a home that's freaking haunted. <laughs> and that is the craziest shit that I've ever dealt with in a, uh, in a listing. <laughs> so, so did you Google that house and see if there had been a murder there or some story? I did Google it. There was nothing that, sh- that was showing up. But, um, you know, some of those historic areas of the, of the Twin Cities, you, you, you've got these homes that have been around for hundreds of years. And they all have character. I mean, w- m- you know, I had never been in a market where I had to deal, deal with these kind of homes until I moved to the Twin Cities. And, and once you started talking about it, with your fellow agents, the, uh, everyone's ghost stories started coming out. Even uh, my old brokerage that, that I worked at for a little bit, it was a former uh, was a former morgue for the local hospital. Are you serious? Yeah, and um, uh, the receptionist refused to go downstairs into the basement because that's where they kept the bodies. Because uh, she went downstairs once and watched as things on the wall started to to get to get pushed off of the wall, pictures and picture frames and things like that. I just never thought that I would deal with that kind of thing and, and, until I moved to the Twin Cities and boom. <laughs> it, oh my gosh. Now I totally want to go back to Minneapolis and go to that office. Dude, you go to it. I'll tell you where it is. It, that, the brokerage isn't around anymore, but the building still exists. And I, be, I keep hearing that they can't get anyone to fill uh, any leases in that building because no one wants to move in. But uh, yeah, I mean, these, these, but the ghost stories in general, uh, you can kind of feel it. And that the, my client definitely did. And she... <laughs> It's something that we laugh about to this day. Well, I will point out to you, if you're a consumer listening to this, ghosts in a house are not a material fact. So because, you know, they're not really material, so we can't disclose it. And so if you hear about ghosts, it's not something your realtor can even tell you unless there's proof of it somewhere. It's crazy. Well, actually, that's the, that's the funny part. In the Minnesota disclosures, there is an actual um, actual uh, uh, like two or three sentences in there, if I remember correctly, about hauntings because... Somebody bought a home that was, um, you know, way back in the day, somebody bought a home that was actually, uh, that was marketed as haunted. The buyer didn't experience any, any, ex- any haunting experiences and actually sued the seller to get the home back, if I remember correctly. So there is actually in the Minnesota disclosure, this is how local real estate and real estate forms can be, um, that, you know, it's in those forms that, uh, that was uh, you know, denoting the, you know, you cannot market a home that is haunted be- and for exactly what you said. That's kind of hilarious, though, that they're suing because it wasn't haunted enough. <laughs> totally. All right. So I appreciate you telling us about the haunted house here. And if you're a realtor or home inspector, lender, broker, or a consumer who's got a story about something crazy you've lived with in real estate... We'd love for you to come on the show and share it because real estate is not exactly what you always see on HGTV. And our job as realtors is to take the craziest moments and keep it professional so that we can look after our consumers. Because look, these people went off and found themselves a house that suited their needs. And the sellers had a listing agent who was continuing to find the right buyer. So everybody worked together for good. Totally. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the show. And guys, don't forget to subscribe and tune in next time. for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more.